Wilt, I presume? Excuse me? We have not yet met. I am Torovic Boehner. Perhaps your friends Siska and Arno told you about me. Oh, do forgive me. I had forgotten about poor Arno. We found his charred remains amidst the debris of our plant. Of course, it was his own vandalism which caused such chaos, so perhaps we should not be too sorry. He made his choices. As will you, Wilt. As will you. But all in due course. For now, I must admit that I am impressed with how you've navigated our facility thus far. Nonetheless, I have ceased to consider your sport worth the effort. It would be logical for you to be eliminated at this point. And yet, there are others who disagree. They still regard you as an exploitable resource. Your impressive ruthlessness is matched only by your complete lack of any conviction. You're a powerful weapon that can be turned any which way. Please, accompany me. Wilt is apprehensive. His curiosity tempers the urge to attack, which pulses through his tensed fingers. Torvik turns and strides towards the cable car sitting upon the boarding platform. Wilt hesitates before following him. They board the vehicle just as its motor splutters into gear. sways precariously in the wind. Its motor cogs crawl tentatively along the cable guiding it through the night air. Wilt stares into the ravine below. Its empty space seems to possess endless mass. A nerve in his neck tingles. The cable car has been decorated with four small, disturbing sculptures carved from the basalt and granite abundant on the slopes outside. Each one depicts a strange, humanoid creature, half beast and half machine. The one nearest to Wilt is standing erect, with a metalloid structure embedded beneath the skin of its back. Wilt looks aghast at the prospect examining the symbiotic depiction of steel and skin. So, despite everything, you are here. Of all the places for your sickly little bag of flesh to end up, somehow things have led us to this place, this moment. Torvik pauses, turning to one of the statues at his left. Frightening, isn't it? The things which we can do, such power emanates from our organs and limbs. The car's gears continue to grind it along its threaded route through the abyss. We are almost there.
Huge portraits of austere faces hang along the staircase, each tinged by the cold sneer of high command which emanates from their pursed lips and stern frowns. They were all powerful men. Please accompany me to the upper residence. I'd like to show you something. Torvik strides into the vast stone-walled room and beckons Wilt. In the middle of the space is a large bronze cage crammed full of snow pigeons. Wilt wondered how he'd not noticed it when he first entered. The birds emit pained squawks as they peck and jostle at each other for space. Torvik watches the feral scene intently, captivated by the prospect of beak and claw-drawn blood. Do you think you would behave differently were you inside that cage, Will? Or are you disgusted by what they are doing to each other? They're animals. I expect little more from them. And from people, Will? Are they not animals? You don't strike me as someone who expects much more of people than you do of these pigeons. Yes, it can be. And do you care, Will? Do you care whether the world is a rusty cage or not? You're enjoying their suffering, aren't you? You found a way to bring out the worst in them, to render them at their ugliest. And you're proud of it. You read people well, Will. I am indeed proud of this and so much more that I have managed to achieve. Torvik pauses to toss a few scraps of fruit into the cage. His face is tensed in grim fascination as the starved birds fight viciously to earn a bite of the rotting food. I see in you a man who is lost, Wilt. Awake from this dreary existence you have drifted into. Swear your allegiance to us and rediscover what it means to believe in something again. We know you have strength and that you're not afraid to use it. Our clerks have researched your background thoroughly. Your former regiment has kept extensive records of its war deserters. Your murder of the officer, Corporal Harold Wickmans. There is something ruthless inside you, Wilt. Something which we don't often find. That was different. I... We weren't just two caged pigeons fighting over breadcrumbs. You were, and still are, exactly that, Wilt. When backed into a corner, you acted like any one of these dirty, grubby creatures would have done. I had a reason. Not one I will ever feel the need to share with you, but I had a reason. He deserved what he got. He you can think whatever you need to think, Wilt. If you must distance yourself from these vermin, so be it. I myself prefer to compliment you on your similarity to them. So, what's it to be? Will you release yourself from your petty vanities and join us in our purpose? Or would you prefer some sort of futile dramatic gesture, like the mess your friends made at our facility? Perhaps attack me out of misguided allegiance to that girl. She seems to think I'm dangerous. If you think her right, perhaps you should do something about it. Torvik steps to Wilt and offers his hand. Wilt pauses. The room is silent, but for the yelps of agony coming from the cage.
Wilt accepts Torvik's hand. Torvik's other hand is clenched. He raises it to Wilt's face and opens his fist. In his palm, he holds the lifeless severed head of one of the snow pigeons. You know now what you must do. That young girl will never acquiesce to reason like you have done. Go and see to it that she doesn't leave here alive. I'm tired of her meddling in our affairs. Wilt knew that it would come to this. He nods and accepts a small pistol which Torbik offers and then turns towards the barracks where Siska awaits. The rain continues to hurtle from the heavens. Each drop slaps against the rock with the force and intensity of a cosmic explosion. To the naked eye, the rock is unmoved. It resists unchanged and defiant as before, but a change has nonetheless occurred. Each drop has taken its tiny toll. One day, only pebbles will remain of mountains and cliffs. Nothing stays the same. Not for a second. <laughs>